Hey guys, I just wanted to show this uh, mini quadcopter that I've been working on the last few days. Um, I got the idea from a friend that flies like a larger version of them and like the hex copters and stuff like that and they looked really fun. Um, so I got this little kit from Hobby King. Um, it's basically, I think it's called the X230 uh, mini quadcopter combo. Um, basically what you get with that is the, the frame, uh, four motors, uh, four ESCs and well the, the whole frame itself. Um, the little landing legs here I laser cut myself. Um, they're not ideal because they're so solid that you know if you have a crash landing they're pretty much just going to break off. Um, but that's not a big deal since I can easily replace them. Um, I did get some landing skids with it but uh, I didn't really know what size I was looking for so yeah they're a bit big. I mean they're good because it'll stop the um, stop it from flipping over too easily and it also allows you to land it a bit better but they just add a fair bit of weight to it. Um, so basically what I've got on here is um, on this side here is all the that's the was it 915 megahertz um, telemetry module so that's just basically wireless serial. Um, on top of that is the Bluetooth the Bluetooth module there and then the actual control board at the top there and that's the um, multi wee Pro board from Hobby King um, but I've put the Mega Pirate NG firmware on there so I can actually run the, uh, the Argicopter and Mission Planner software with it um, and the GPS module just stuck up the top there I'm gonna focus yeah, you can sort of see it through the top um, but basically what I've, what I've done on this is I've got the receiver stuck under the bottom there and then the uh, control boards mounted on top of that with double sided tape. Um, originally it had screw holes which mounted just straight into the uh, to the frame supports but I cut the corners off and then put uh, double sided tape to down for a bit of vibration insulation on there. Um, and because it's such a small uh, copter I've had to sort of optimize the space a bit. So I've got the antenna sort of stuck down the side here which isn't ideal. Um, it'll make it a bit directional but I've got plenty of power to play with anyway. Um, that's the low voltage beeper. Um, I've also set it up so it can send the battery voltage back over to the, back over serial to the computer or to my phone as well. Uh, but that's just a good indicator if you're flying and you don't have a computer or phone set up you can just hear it beeping when it's flat. And the battery's just velcroed on underneath uh, sitting on top of a on top of a bit of foam just to stop it sliding around. Um, I have actually tried flying this before but um, my PID settings were off so um, it was really unstable and I've basically already damaged the props that came with it so um, I have a few more on order that I ordered at the same time but they're coming from China um, slow mail so it's a bit slower um, but it uses 50-30 uh, props so 5 inches um, and 3 inch pitch and they're really thin blades are under a mil thick um, see it doesn't take much to damage them but they are pretty durable as long as you don't run them into solid objects as you can see there's a bit of dirt on them from when it's flipped over and just run into the ground um, I have the damaged one here somewhere oh there it is so yeah this is the one that uh, ran into a tree and there's also a bit of grass embedded in it as well so yeah, definitely a good idea to get some spare props while you're at it because you're definitely going to break them. Um, apart from that, yeah, weighs about, I think it's about 500 grams all up with the battery in it. So it is decently heavy for its size. Um, it's a little bit too heavy from what I can tell um, because it does require a bit over 50% throttle to lift up. Uh, but it's not too bad. It's still, well, for the short duration I was able to fly it, it still flew all right. Um, but yeah, I had to do a bit more um, PID tuning. Uh, I think I've got it pretty well dialed in now, but of course I can't test it till I get the new props in. Um, I think the main issue was when I first got the ESCs, I did do the all-in-one calibration, uh, but I didn't actually read the ESC manual, of course, because no one reads manuals. Um, but at the top here, it says throttle calibration within the first four seconds. Um, and I waited a fair bit longer than that, so I would have actually been doing brake uh, brake setting instead of uh, throttle calibration. So I don't think the uh, ESCs were actually calibrated the first time I was flying, it, and that's why it sort of veered off uh, and ran into a tree. Um, so apart from that, yeah, sweating on the new props. So what I'll do is I've got 
Um, this is actually running Mega Pirate NG 2.8, which is the uh, Argicopter 2.8 uh, firmware. And I know there's a uh, Argicopter 3 version out and also Mega Pirate uh, for version 3 as well. Uh, but because this is an old board, it uses a, um, an older gyro, so the newer version does, doesn't actually work with the newer gyro just yet. So I'm basically stuck on an old version for now. Um, so what I'll do is I'll power this up and do this with one hand. And as you can see, you've got all the... There's a lot of LEDs in this thing. Uh, there's at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven LEDs on there. Um, See so yeah, how the wireless serial module's going. All right, so I've plugged in the um, receiver serial module, which I've just put a bit of shrink wrap over um, because it does come as just a bare circuit board, so it just adds a bit of protection to it. Um, so yeah, well, the copter's plugged in. So we'll go to Mission Planner and connect it. Yeah, this is an old version of Mission Planner because I haven't been able to... Um, I tried the newer version with this uh, version of Mega Pirate, but um, because some of the features on the board itself are missing, the software doesn't run too happily. Um, so as you can see, we're getting data now. Um, GPS does work really well, but because we're inside at the moment, it won't. Um, so if I grab the copter here... So you can see the uh, heads-up display is working. It does everything you expect. You've also got your um, yaw as well. So yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, I kind of wanted to start with a mini quad at first because I, I paid about 400 Australian shipped for all the stuff, um, all up. Um, and for what it is, once it's actually tuned and going, it's actually a pretty capable little system. Like it can do all the GPS waypoints and that sort of stuff as well. Um, and I went with a, uh, a Turnigy 9X standard transmitter that pretty much everyone goes to because it's so cheap um, but in terms of actual build quality and stuff it's really decent like I was expecting you know flimsy flimsy plastic you know shitty plastic knobs and all that sort of stuff but now nah, they've actually done really well with this um, I mean there are a few software bugs and limitations and stuff that are a bit annoying but it does its job for the price it's like 60 bucks for that and the receiver and it's um, nine channels itself and then the receiver's eight channels so um, works pretty well. So what I'll do is turn the transmitter on. As you can see it's ready to go. Doesn't have a backlight or anything on it yet but I don't really see the point since it doesn't get any data from the copter itself. Um, the battery voltage up the top there is just of the transmitter. Um, so if I arm it, see the LED stop blinking. I'm not actually sure what all the LEDs are, um, like well, there's three LEDs up in the top corner there. Um, I know one of them's for GPS and all that, but I'm not sure what all the others do. Uh, so that's on now, and then you can see all the motors. All the motors seem to start at the same time, so what I was noticing before is that um, even though I thought I'd done the ESC calibration, um, if I have the throttle up like that, and then tilted the copter to one side when it tried to correct one of the um, well some of the motors had actually stopped completely um, so if I tilted it like that this motor up here would actually stop uh, which I don't think is meant to happen so now it doesn't stop at all and you can hear it sort of correcting even though it has no props on yeah vibrating on the table a bit but yeah I um, thought I'd just do a video of that um, expecting some new props sometime this week um, I was hoping today but it doesn't look like it's going to happen and then hopefully it can take it for a fly I'm just not sure about the uh, configuration because most people put the ESCs actually out in the motor arms along here um, but it looks really ugly unless I trim the motor wires right down which I don't really want to do um, so I've actually stuck the ESCs all underneath here. You sort of see them all jammed around around the side here. 
Yeah, hopefully that works alright. Um, I mean, it's pretty ugly looking, but you know, whatever. If you crash it and break it, well, these um, arms are all made of basically circuit board. Um, so what I can even do is just design these up and then send them off to like a uh, PCB fabrication place uh, like IT Studio they'll do because all these boards are less than 10 centimeters like by themselves these are all screwed together uh, I could get 10 of these motor arms made up for like 20 bucks um, through IT you know any color I want and basically I can do this for the whole frame itself so I can get any part of this frame remade for about 20 bucks um, for 10 pieces of it so even if you do crash it and break something pretty bad you can easily replace it um, provided you can actually draw these up and get them made uh, to the right sizes um, in terms of replacing other parts though these motors they're not that common but you'll be able to find something um, at least similar that'll fit the same screw holes and you probably have to put a, a separate prop adapter on them because these ones have actually got threaded shafts straight on the motor uh, just M3 with um, well, they call them nylock nuts on there so, yeah um, by the way these zippy battery things they're complete crap honestly um, I should have just gone for the Turnigy one straight up because I've got a few of the Turnigy packs like this one here um, it's a 3 cell 5 amp hour pack and like the Turnigy is a cheap brand a uh, really cheap brand but their cells and the packs are actually really decent um, like this one here, even though it's right at 5,000 milliamp hours, it actually takes probably 5,500 of charge. Um, whereas these zippy packs, got two of them here, uh, they're rated at 1,300, but the highest I've ever seen one taking a charge so far is about 900 milliamp hours. So, I mean, they work, I mean, they feel pretty decent, but the Turnigy packs are just a lot better um, in terms of capacity and how much they can hold and that sort of stuff uh, so yeah just sort of share the setup and got the prop balancer there for the new props when they come in and yeah hopefully I can get this thing off the ground not too difficult um, I think the first mistake I made was actually trying to fly it off the grass um, before it was completely tuned so what had happened is because it wasn't tuned properly it had try and or, and because of the ground effect as well, it'd try and sort of skid along the ground and then the skids would get stuck in the grass so the thing would basically just instantly try and flip itself and um, I think because the ESCs weren't calibrated as soon as I actually did get it off the ground it'd just fly straight backwards at you um, which is when I hit the tree and broke the props so hmm. you see how low friction that is, just the ceiling fan up there is actually pushing the blade it hasn't done that before, that's cool. Um, but yeah, hopefully by Wednesday I'll have some new props and then I can actually take this thing for a fly. But um, it's been fun building it anyway. Um, it's a pretty expensive little project, but hopefully it'll be a lot of fun when it's done with all the GPS waypoints and stuff. Um, and also I could try and find a little lightweight camera or something to put on there as well. Um, I've got this little... I can't remember what it's called. Little, yeah, little AI ball thing and it's basically a little tiny um, Wi-Fi camera so what I could do is just strap this thing on there somehow and then I can actually view it um, on like a netbook or from a phone it acts as its own little uh, access point um, it's really low resolution though but it's kind of cool just how compact it is um, the annoying thing though is it uses the CR2 uh, lithium batteries and get that open but it's a um, it's a battery that's used I haven't seen it personally used in a camera but apparently it's used in cameras pretty often um, those things are annoyingly expensive and this thing uses um, because of the video processor it uses a lot of power and it gets really hot really quickly um, so even though it's a you know nine ten dollar battery it'll only last about 1.5 hours continuous on one of those batteries so I've actually ordered a few rechargeables for it uh, but yeah thanks for watching and I'll do another video once I get the new props in